Hi, my name is Mary Esther Gilbert. I'm a nutritional physiologist and holistic uh, nutritional healing specialist. And I've been teaching clients and the public how to heal their bodies for over 40 years now. And I've written some books and set up an online school. And I've been busy trying to pass down the information that I've learned for and it's ongoing research, ongoing learning, and I forever am anxious to share that knowledge with the masses because we have a, a population that is unhealthy and is sick and desperate for answers. And the population, people, they just don't know where to turn. There is so much misinformation out on the Internet, and so it's my mission, it's been my mission for many years to inform the masses, inform people so that they can take charge of their health and manage it very effectively. And it all begins with uh, what's going on inside your micro, trillions of micro cells in your body that compose the entire system. And knowing how that works is, has been what my focus is on, on teaching people about the body. Uh, I've delved into many years of scientific research uh, on healing botanicals from around the world and put together many articles and uh, books on that subject. And in particular, uh, I get, I get uh, questions from people quite often, um, nutritional health related questions. And I've been just uh, answering the questions, but uh, putting them into video form so that people can have, have something to refer back to. And I also like to include other um, other sources of references so that people can continue on with their research and be directed toward the right kind of research. Um, unless you are scientifically trained, you uh, people not, don't normally know where to look for answers, and they can't tell the difference between uh, pseudoscience or real science and, and what it means to collect information in that area. So. This time, I'm giving a, a short webinar on Eziac tea, which is a tea that was prepared by the Ojibwe Native Americans in Canada. And when they introduced the product to certain people, they were able to find that, indeed, these combinations of botanicals um, do heal various types of diseases. Tonight, I'm going to focus on how one particular nurse ran a clinic, and she discovered that uh, she was being able to heal all of her cancer patients. So I'll go ahead and read you the story. I'll, um, I'll embellish it. I'll elaborate whenever, uh, whenever I see the need. But uh, basically, I just want to read this to you this way. I can zero in and focus on exactly what I want to say because I tend to go off in tangents. There's so much information in here that um, sometimes I just go off on tangents. But um, I really want to relay the fact that there is a tremendous amount of scientific validation for the thousands of healing botanicals that people have been using on this planet, carefully documenting and applying them and going back every couple of hundred years and, and reviewing that information that they've accumulated and uh, make corrections, make additions, and re-implement, and uh, continue on with the empirical evidence that uh, that has been found to be something that you that the scientific community does not need to ignore. The scientific method is a sure way to maintain the focus and to uh, to stay on track as far as making sure that um, there's no um, no bias in studying the effects of any botanical, things like that. So when you combine thousands of years of indigenous use with the scientific method and you actually apply them in real life, which is what I did for my clients, uh, they came to me with a variety of ailments and I just dove into the scientific literature and the history of various botanicals and found that uh, I could compile nutritional healing protocols for people. And uh, so I maintained that practice for 30 years, and now I'm just writing about it and uh, trying to get the word out to more than just one-on-one, -on -one, uh, you know, client-to-customer kind of situation. So 
let me go ahead and just start reading this for you and that way you can listen to it. You don't necessarily have to watch the video uh, and you can listen to it or watch it at uh, whenever you have the time. But stick to it all the way to the end if you can. If not, do listen to it in increments if you have to. But always go back because this is very important. This is just one example of uh, a, a very uh, ancient botanical formulation that has been proven over and over again. So I'll demonstrate the science for you. I'll give you a little bit about the history of the Easy Act Chi formulation. So centuries of indigenous use of Easy Act Chi ingredients indicate various applications for various ailments. Scientific research has demonstrated that the combined ingredients contain a wide range of phytochemical compounds, also known as phytonutrients, for effectively preventing free radical damage in cells and thereby preventing damage to the DNA. In the 1930s, nurse Renee Casey ran a clinic and discovered this formulation worked against various forms of cancer. After some years, word reached the medical establishment about her treating cancer patients successfully, and it was promptly shut down. Since then and up to current times, this has been a repeated story of many medical doctors or other nutritional or holistic practitioners who have attempted to inform the public about this formulation and other botanical formulations out on the market. Literally thousands of studies that have examined and tested the vast number of cancer-destroying compounds in the world's botanicals have shown anti-cancer, immune-improving, and detoxifying properties. What the vast number of plants in the world have in common are their complex biochemical compounds. Extensive research has discovered over 25,000 phytochemicals in the plant kingdom thus far. Other natural therapies introduced by practitioners such as animal, pancreatic, and liver enzyme therapies, respectively, and others have also been severely discredited due to threatening conflicts of monetary interests in the medical industrial complex, which includes the pharmaceutical drug industry. Although science research has not focused on testing the actual chi formulation, the research has focused on its individual botanical ingredients. Therefore, statements that proclaim there is little scientific evidence that the chi formulation works on cancer are grossly misleading. Items one and two that I'll show you now belong are, below are examples of well-conducted studies that were properly designed on the chi itself. And the other items, three, four, five, and six, are focused on, in, on studies for individual botanicals in the Easy Act tea. So here's one study for, that was done on the entire formulation, and they, uh, they titled it Easy Act tea, Scavenging of Reactive Oxygen Species and Effects on DNA Damage. So the botanicals in the Easy Act tea, here are the Latin terms, the scientific terms that are uh, world known, no matter what language or what country botanicals are studied in, it has to be, it's very critical that the focus is on the exact correct botanical. So this is why the universal names are in Latin, and this is uh, what identifies specific plants very, very specifically. So I just took the abstract of this particular uh, scientific uh, study. And so it says, in this study, we examined the effects of EZAC on free radical scavenging and DNA damage in a non-cellular system, as well as the effects EZAC on lipid peroxidation using the, the RAW264.7 cell line. And scientists label everything. So when they study a particular set of cells and how they replicate and, and the effect uh, that they have on the, on the experiment, then they have to label them specific numbers so that anyone going back later to, uh, to try to duplicate or to try to, um, to communicate what they have found in the study, uh, then the, the organizational structure and the information will be, will be uh, compliant and it will be uh, uh, steady you know, and, and easy to refer to later. So it goes on to say, we observed using electron spin resonance, and that's just the kind of, of, uh, of method that they use, that EZAC effectively scavenged hydroxyl up to 84% reduction in radical signal 
at the 50% tea preparation concentration and superoxide radicals up to 82% reduction in radical signal, also at the 50% tea preparation concentration, as well as prevented hydroxyl radical-induced DNA damage. In addition, EZAC inhibited hydroxyl radical-induced lipid peroxidation by up to 50% at the 50% tea preparation concentration. These data indicate that EZAC tea possesses potent antioxidant and DNA protective activity, properties that are common to natural anti-cancer agents. This study may help to explain the mechanism behind the reported anti-cancer effects of EZAC. And so the notation here is uh, Leonard and his team of scientists back in 2006. This was the method that they used to conclude that uh, EZAC team does possess, possess uh, natural anti-cancer properties. So if you want to study the, um, this scientific study, you can just click on the, this link right here and you can go to it. Or if you would like a copy of this report, please email me. I'll put the email address uh, or my website where you can download the PDF. That would probably be better if I just uh, give you the website address and I'll set it up so that you can just download this report. And then you can, um, you can click on these links and go directly to the, uh, the study, or you can just cut and paste, uh, copy and paste it, you know, in your search box. Okay, so uh, the second study I picked was, is called the In Vitro Comparison of EZAC and Floor Essence on Humor Tumor Cell Lines. There's been a little bit of variations from the original EZAC formula, and that one is called the Floor Essence. It includes all of the original botanicals with some added botanicals to it. So here's an extract from this study. EZAC, which they abbreviate ES, and Floor Essence, abbreviated FE in this case, are two herbal teas widely taken by North American cancer patients during chemo and radiation therapy. In vitro studies on the antiproliferative and differentiation inducing activities of these teas were performed. ES and FE showed negligible antiproliferative activity on GERAC leukemia cells. Both herbal teas inhibited 50% of the MCF7 breast cancer cell growth at 1 to 10 dilution. The IC50 was about 1 40th and 1 to 10 dilution, dilution of FE and ES respectively for uh, this particular line of human breast cancer cells. The IC50 for HL60 cells was at 1 10th dilution I keep saying that, dilution of FE and less than one-tenth dilution of ES. ES at one-tenth dilution induced expression of nonspecific esterase in 16% of HL60 cells compared to about 5% in FE-treated cells and untreated controls. ES treatment of these cells induced 47 to 67% nitro blue tetrazoleum positive staining cells compared to that number there in cells treated with one-tenth dilution of FE. Flow cytometry analysis showed that both ES and FE treatment between one-tenth and one-one-hundredth dilutions only slightly affected the cell cycle progression of this particular line of uh, leukemia cells. And the scientists also state that our data show that both ES and FE herbal teas demonstrated antiproliferative and differentiation inducing properties in vitro only at high concentrations. Further research is needed to elucidate the in vivo activities. In other words, more research is needed to, um, to apply this experiment on human or other live animal subjects. So this is a very positive outcome showing that the EZAC T is effective for this particular line of um, cancer cells, whether it is with the cancer cell uh, for breast cancer or for leukemia. And here is the reference for that. So going on to the specific studies on the uh, individual ingredients, there is an overwhelming amount of, I mean, literally thousands of of scientific uh, studies that have been done and documented in an innumerable amount of 
scientific journals. So uh, I just picked out two just as an example. And if you were to click on each of these links, it would lead to even more studies right there on the same web page. Or you can do a, an internet search, and if you're going to do your own research, make sure that you come up with scientific studies only. And uh, peer-reviewed studies that, that gather many, many different studies and uh, review all of the studies. They pick out the best and credible, most credible uh, studies, and then they report on those. So that really narrows the field down of the thousands upon thousands of scientific studies that are being done on various botanicals. And so uh, teams of experts from, from universities and industry uh, experts are, are usually picked for these expert review panels. So I'd like to try to find those. Um, in this particular case, I found a, a study on the burdock root, which is also called the Arctium, Arctium lapa. And uh, the abstract for this study states, Arctium species are known for a variety of pharmacological effects due to their diverse volatile and non-volatile secondary metabolites. Representatives of Arctium species contain non-volatile compounds, including lignans, fatty acids, acetylenic compounds, phytosterols, polysaccharides, caffeol, uh, caffeol ilquinic acid derivatives, flavonoids, terpenes, terpenoids, and volatile compounds such as hydrocarbons, aldehydes, methoxy, pyrazines, carboxylic and fatty acids, monoterpenes, and sesquiterpenes. These are all very complex biochemical compounds that not only protect the plant and its metabolism, but also uh, protect human cells. The Arctium species also possess bioactive properties such as anti-cancer, anti-diabetic, antioxidant, hepatoprotective, gastroprotective, antibacterial, antiviral, antimicrobial, antiallergic, and anti-inflammatory effects. And the, this goes to show you just how much research has been done on the properties of this particular plant alone. This review aims to provide a complete overview of the chemistry and biological activities of the secondary metabolites found in therapeutically used Ar Arctium species. Summary of pharmacopoeias and monograph con contents indicating the relevant phytochemicals and therapeutic effects are also discussed along with possible safety considerations. So this is one heck of a study, of a, a review of many, many studies that have been done on the burdock root. And this is the team of review reviewers. Um, and this is the link that will take you to it. So the next uh, ingredient in the Easy Act tea is the sheep sorrel. And this particular uh, type of plant has always been used uh, is the Rumex acetosella. So their abstract on this particular uh, study said, medicinal and food plants as well as their bioactive fractions have been used by diverse human cultures since ancient times. These plants provide multiple health benefits because of the presence of a plethora of phytochemicals, including phenylpropanoids, isopropanoids, alkaloids, sulfated compounds, peptides, and polysaccharides that are responsible for various biological activities such as anti-cancer, antioxidant, antifungal, antibacterial, antidysenteric, anti-inflammatory, anti-ulcer, antihypertensive, and anticoagulant properties. The genus Rumex includes edible and medicinal herbs belonging to buckwheat, or the Polygonaceae family, consisting of about 200 species rich in phenyl, propanoids, and anthraquinones. Such, some Rumex species have inhibited, excuse me, have exhibited health-promoting effects and have been used as traditional foods and herbal remedies through a limited information, though a limited information has been documented on their specific biological properties. Therefore, this survey aimed at reviewing the Rumex species with documented biological activity, focusing on preclinical evidences on their efficacy and safety. So many, many studies uh, that, they, that these uh, group of scientists and experts gathered together 
and studied the, all the different uh, properties of this particular plant, the sheep sorrel. So the next ingredient is the slippery elm, and uh, in particular, it's the ulmus rubris, or rubra. And uh, this one was a different kind of website, and they did give an introduction, so I'll just read you the introduction. It reads kind of like an abstract, only it doesn't refer to a specific uh, scientific study. So uh, some organizations are, do their scientific homework, and then they just uh, post information on their website. So be careful uh, when you go out there and do your own research. If you arrive at a website, if it does not have scientific references, then it's not credible. Then uh, chances are someone who wrote the article is not as qualified as they should be. So uh, you want to zero in on the scientific research. Um, and also, you know, of course, go over do your research on the, the indigenous history of these plants. And uh, you'll notice that a lot of times, or most of the time, I have found that uh, the indigenous empirical data that's centuries old, sometimes uh, as much as 5,000 years old, uh, will match the science because the science came along later. And uh, back when I started my practice in the 70s, the late 70s, there was not nearly as much research on these botanicals. And the attitude, the general attitude of the scientific community was, well, let's prove uh, these old wives' tales wrong. But it turns out that the intelligence of humanity has been uh, you know, well documented going back centuries, thousands of years. So um, the fact that they kept very careful, um, very careful, doc uh, very, very careful, they, they documented uh, carefully the effects of these botanicals, put it that way. Okay, so on this site it said, in the United States alone, 60 to 70 million people are affected by some type of disease, of digestive disease. Uh, Ayurveda is the traditional system of medicine originating in India that emphasizes gastrointestinal health and disease prevention with herbal and lifestyle medicine. The herbal medicines commonly used for gastrointestinal health and disease in Ayurvedic medicine, as well as other traditional systems of medicine, include the Ulmus rubra and the Glyceriza glabra, and as well as the widely known polyherbal medicinal formulation of uh, Ambilica officinalis, Terminalia valerica, and Terminalia, Terminalia chibula which were three herbal medicines of greatest interest for the current study. So this study encompasses not only the one component of the uh, easy act tea, but they also considered uh, looking at other botanicals as well. So um, in my 40 years of research ongoing, and it's never going to stop as long as I live, uh, I am always uh, amazed at the huge uh, range of bio biochemical compounds that are, have been studied already in uh, countless botanicals throughout the world. And so um, it's not surprising to know that most botanicals are indeed antimicrobial and do uh, act on the various body systems, uh, especially the immune system. So uh, it's not surprising to me anymore when I provide someone with information and then they, uh, they locate the products and try the products themselves and lo and behold, their results matches the scientific research and it matches the, the historical indigenous use of these botanicals as well. So here's the scientific reference for the, uh, the slippery elm. So you'll see that there are many, many different types of journals. You can't possibly uh, find all of them, you know, in a short period of time. It takes years and years to, I'm still finding unfamiliar journals. I guess uh, they're popping up and they're, they're, uh, some of them stay for many decades and others come and go. But uh, this particular one uh, is the one that referenced the, uh, the study done on the slippery elm. Okay, so number six, the, uh, the fourth uh, ingredient is the Chinese rhubarb, and this is the rhu officinale. And the extract on this study says, 
Chronic renal failure, which they abbreviate CRF, is a major public health problem worldwide. Earlier studies have revealed statute, uh, salutary effects of rhubarb extracts in CRF. In this study, we employed lipid, oh, lipidomic and metabolomic, meta, metabolomic approaches to identify the plasma biomarkers and to determine the effect of treatment with petroleum ether, ethyl acetate, and, uh, excuse me, ethyl acetate and N-butanol extracts of rhubarb in a rat model of CRF with adenine-induced chronic tubulo-interstitial nef nephropathy. Okay, so that uh, has to do with the inducing the uh, damage to the kidneys on these uh, chest animals. In addition, clinical biochemistry, histological evaluation, and pro fibrotic protein expression were analyzed. Significant changes were found between the CRF and control groups representing characteristic phenotypes of rats with CRF. Treatment with the three rhubarb extracts improved renal injury and dysfunction, either fully or partially reversed the plasma metabolized abnormalities and attenuated upregulation of pro-fibrotic proteins. So they listed uh, the, the, the names of the proteins here and uh, also collagen 1. The nephroprotective effect of ethyl acetate extract was better than other extracts. The differential metabolites were closely associated with glycerol, phospholipid, fatty acid, and amino acid metabolism. The results revealed a strong link between renal tubulo interstitial fibrosis and glycerol phospholipid metabolism and L-carnitine metabolism in the development of chronic renal failure. Amelioration of CRF with the three rhubarb extracts was associated with the delayed development and or reversal the disorders in key metabolites associated with adenine-induced CRF. So they concluded that uh, this particular herb is beneficial for improving the functioning of the, um, the kidneys. So when you do your research also, um, and you look at various scientific studies, it's easier if you're a, a layperson and not familiar with the scientific terms is just to read the abstract and also the discussion section of many uh, of these scientific uh, publications and uh, also the, the discussion and the, uh, and the conclusion. All right, so here's one more study that I found on the, uh, it was the Chinese rhubarb, and here's their extract, abstract. Chronic renal failure, <laughs> yeah, chronic renal failure, or CRF, is a major public health problem worldwide. Earlier studies have revealed salutary effects of rhubarb extracts in CRF. In this study, we employed lipid, oh, lipidomic and metabolomic approaches to identify the plasma biomarkers and to determine the effect of treatment with petroleum ether, ethyl acetate, and n butanol extracts of rhubarb in a rat model of CRF with adenine-induced chronic tubulo interstitial nephropathy. It looks like this was the exact same. No, it was not. It uh, sounded very familiar, so I'll go on. This is a different set of um, of researchers, apparently, but it sounds to me like I'm reading the same exact one, and sometimes they might be utilizing some of the verbiage in another study. So uh, here is another study that was uh, that was done, whether to see if the uh, the Chinese uh, rhubarb did have a positive impact on the kidneys. So reading on. In addition, clinical biochemistry, histological evaluation, and pro-fibrotic protein expression were analyzed. Significant changes were found between the CRF and control groups representing characteristic phenotypes of rats with CRF. Treatment with the three rhubarb extracts improved renal injury and dysfunction and either fully or partially reversed the plasma metabolites abnormalities and attenuated upregulation of pro-fibrotic proteins and those are the inflammatory responses 
where the body starts to form micro uh, scars in the tissues, which leads to more inflammation. So this was uh, apparently um, reversed this process. So the nephroprotective effect of ethyl acetate extract was better than other extracts. They found that this particular one was more effective. The differential metabolites were closely associated with glycerol, phospholipid, fatty acid, and amino acid metabolisms. The results revealed a strong link between renal tubulointerstitial fibrosis and glycerol phospholipid metabolism and L-carnitine metabolism in the development of CRF. Amelioration of CRF with the three rhubarb extracts was associated with the delayed development and or reversal of the disorders in key metabolites associated with adenine-induced CRF. So this time they were introducing uh, or discovering certain amino acids that added to uh, the inflammatory process in kidney problems. So uh, certain forms of amino acids can induce inflammation and um, the essential amino acids that are found in the right types of foods are, are very much needed by our human bodies since we cannot uh, metabolize them or create them in the body so they must be uh, taken in through the diet. So uh, amino acids uh, are basically just the, the basic molecules that, will, that your body will take and, and uh, build new proteins, uh, including some of the stress chemicals and some of the inflammatory um, enzymes as well. So uh, there's good and bad, and it depends on the conditions of the body. So here's another section that I had to put in here. Um, here are some of the reports of easy T side effects. And I want to show you an example of a very poorly conducted uh, scientific, so-called scientific study. So you have to look at the political side of what's going on in the scientific arena as well. So when you look up any kind of scientific uh, article, you'll want to see who uh, or what group of people actually funded the experiment. So sometimes you can directly, um, you can do your additional research on the entities that funded the research and you'll discover whether there are, are specific, uh, you know, monetary interests involved or not. So most scientific studies are legitimate, especially if they are peer reviewed. And so, um, and also in the document itself, the study will indicate whether there are any special interests attached to the study or not, and they're supposed to say that. So, uh, here we go. An ailing person using herbs or other medicinal plants containing potent antioxidant compounds may at first experience nausea, vomiting, headaches, flu-like symptoms, increased bowel movements, swollen glands, or skin eruptions when one continues, excuse me, when one consumes medicinal plants or foods that bind to synthetic chemicals or assist the body in eliminating toxins, fecal matter, or illness-causing microbials such as parasites and bacteria. So here's an abstract I took out uh, to show you one such study. Their abstract says, toxic metals such as arsenic, cadmium, lead, and mercury are ubiquitous, have no beneficial role in human homeostasis, and contribute to non- Communicable, uh, communicable chronic diseases. That much is true. Then it goes on to say, while novel drug targets for chronic disease are eagerly sought, potentially helpful agents that aid in detoxification of toxic elements, chelators, have largely been restricted to overt acute poisoning. Chelation, that is, multiple coordination bonds between organic molecules and metals, is very common in the body and at the heart of enzymes with a metal cofactor such as copper or zinc. So peptides, glutathione and metallothionine, chelate both essential and toxic elements as they are sequestered, transported, and excreted, excreted out of the body. Enhancing natural chelation detoxification pathways as well as use of pharmaceutical chelators against heavy metals are reviewed. Historical adverse outcomes with chelators, lessons learned in the art of using them, and successes using chelation to ameliorate renal 
cardiovascular and neurological conditions highlight the need for renewed attention to simple, safe, inexpensive interventions that offer potential to stem the tide of debilitating, expensive chronic disease. Okay, so this one happens to be um, pretty much uh, f sticking to the facts, you know, that they're stating the obvious in the scientific world that yes, toxic metals will, can be combined to uh, certain nutrient factors from plants, their phytonutrients, or their biochemical compounds, and to help the body eliminate those uh, toxic metals. So this, uh, if you want to go into this a little more, you can uh, read more about chelation, harnessing and enhancing heavy metal detoxification. This is a review of many different uh, uh, bases of knowledge that is put together into one report. So this one happens to be uh, okay. So um, going on here, once the body has successfully eliminated toxic metals, the above detoxification symptoms usually subside. The person is advised to drink plenty of purified spring water, not tap or distilled water, to help flush the circulated toxins through the eliminative organs, which include the kidneys, bowel, lungs, lymph system, and the skin, as well as the digestive system's accessory organs, which is the liver, the spleen, and the gallbladder. So any one of these systems will help your body eliminate the, uh, any kind of synthetics or toxic uh, metals that you may have come in contact with, whether uh, it's through the skin or um, accidental ingestion or ingesting um, foods that, that are contaminated with these toxic metals. Now there's a difference. If you look on the periodic table of elements, you'll see that these toxic metals um, have different versions of them depending on their electron orbits at the atomic level. So uh, one difference of an electron or not can make a huge difference in whether uh, a, a metal can be toxic or not. So we are composed of all of the elements on the periodic table, including the toxic metals. So um, the atomic structure makes all the difference. Okay, so uh, let's see. So anyway, due to conflicts of interest, the medical establishment has chosen to ignore the centuries of empirical evidence and has ignored the scientific evidence or blocked any funding or research that would further confirm uh, of the EZAC formula's anti-cancer properties. Back again to the specific uh, use that the EZAC tea uh, by Nurse Casey back in the 1930s. Also, to further prevent information about the health protective properties of EZAC or any other of the thousands of human botanicals for that matter, strict FDA guidelines specifically state that there should be no medical claims about any botanical or any reference to a body part that infers a plant or its constituents cure any disease or correct any condition. So you'll see that disclaimer on nutritional health products where um, even though they list uh, obviously uh, very ancient plants that, that uh, if you do any research, will convey their, um, their health attributes and their effect in our cells, their positive impact on the body, helping the body to function correctly, uh, do any repair work or replace any damaged DNA. The science is all there, but um, supplement companies are not allowed to mention any of that. So in spite of overwhelming scientific evidence, supplement manufacturers and any health advisor must not make any such direct claims. Instead, supplement companies, educators, practitioners, and individuals must tiptoe around the subject, issuing bland statements that hardly help patients and consumers make informed decisions about managing their nutritional health. And I have been um, very carefully, you know, treading that for 40 years. When I had my practice um, for 30 years, I would have clients sign, sign waivers uh, and the waivers would state that I am not a medical doctor, and um, even though I'm providing you with substantial scientific proof, I'm still not making any claims. And so, you know, I had different forms that the clients had to fill out just to protect my practice and to protect myself. Um, also, as for studies claiming that Easy Act does not cure cancer, following the money trail reveals that not all studies are honest, legitimate, or funded by entities with human health as their priority. Quite the contrary. 
some so-called studies are not performed according to strict rules using the scientific method. And this is a method that's been established for you know, at least a century or more by scientists. And so uh, any legitimate scientific uh, research and I, and any uh, credible scientist will, will tell you what the scientific method entails. So there are definite rules to follow when you're putting together a legitimate scientific study. And are thrown out by legitimate peer-reviewed panels of scholars that evaluate a collection of studies from different teams of researchers around the world. So um, the, these uh, peer reviewers, the panels of scholars and uh, other experts in their field, will have data compiled from every single uh, research study that's been done on any particular botanical or its uh, biochemical constituents. And they will uh, just throw out all the ones that aren't credible. So when you look at a scientific review on something, then you know you're getting uh, the best, most credible research before you. If an individual study is included in a peer-reviewed study that evaluates the quality of any scientific study, then one can be much better assured whether or not a claim is true. Searching the internet and finding various articles from non-qualified sources may appear authoritative to the layperson, but usually do not provide accurate information and can therefore lead a person to reach misinformed conclusions. Furthermore, a poorly conducted study according to panel review scholars must not only include in vitro research, which are observations of isolated cell cultures performed solely in a laboratory, Research must also warrant further studies that include in vivo studies or those on live human subjects. So if you were to isolate some cell cultures in petri dishes and um, either damage the cells or, or nourish the cells and you see the, the causes and effects of that, if they're isolated like that, they're not in the human body. The human body and all of its you know, multiple trillions of biochemical reactions and the monitoring system, the nervous system, the, the hormonal system, and the immune system, all these monitoring systems are absent in petri dish. So a lot of times this in vitro are just kind of preliminary um, tentative studies just to see if there's any effect. So, uh, but when they study with live human or animal subjects, then, uh, then these studies are much more, more subject to uh, to warrant more studies, and so over time you have the effects of the, the study itself and the application. There are thousands of poorly conducted studies to be found. As a case in point, below is a typical study that has political and financial ties to a central monopolistic entity that includes the pharmaceutical and other industries. Uh, these industries harm people and the earth, so uh, it would be kind of a, uh, you know, oxymoron to be involved in, in this kind of a study, but yet to be associated with uh, corporations in the world that harm people and planet. When doing one's own research, checking into the affiliation or association with questionable entities should be the first thing a truth seeker must check on when examining any alleged scientific study. So here's one. Note the conflict of interest affiliation in the example below, which indicates the conflict immediately. This bioengineering lab is not known for advocating the amelioration of diseases through natural botanical medicines. Instead, they are deeply involved in experimental methods on human biology that far deviate from protecting the integrity of the genetic codes of life in human DNA. Instead, their work is focused on the opposite of experimenting and altering DNA. Scientists are concerned that genetically modifying DNA in humans, plants, and animals has already had health and environmental impacts that may be irreversible and can potentially have a destructive cascade effect in the world ecology. I have found uh, in my years of research and examining genetically modified foods that um, more and more studies are, are coming forward that associate things like cancers, various forms of cancers, and uh, genetic defects. Uh, reproductive problems, nervous system disorders, digestive system disorders, and a whole lot of other um, impacts that are yet to be observed in future generations. Upon reading this very 
poorly designed study hardly proved anything about whether EZAC is effective against cancer, and yet this is what they proclaim as their conclusion. So this is just one example out of hundreds of thousands of studies that are rejected by expert peer review panels in the United States. So this is the reference of this uh, so-called scientific study, and here's an example. So they called the study, the title of the study was EZAC and Fluorescence Herbal Tonics Stimulate In Vitro Growth of Human Breast Cancer Cells. So they're claiming that um, experimenting with uh, petri dishes, the uh, cer cer certain uh, breast cancer cell lines that were preserved uh, can, they claim that the, um, these two types of, of teas, which is basically the same, stimulated the growth of human breast cancer cells. Okay, so this kind of research is very much needed to see if that can be duplicated, but it's taken against the hundreds of thousands of scientific studies that have already been done, not to mention indigenous experiencers uh, using the, the product for centuries, thousands of years, and uh, suddenly you've got uh, a special interest group saying that it grows human breast cancer cells. So it reeks of, of suspicion, so this is why it, it's important to have other scientists in other parts of the world, throughout the whole world, to try to uh, duplicate each other's uh, experiments to see if they reach the same conclusion. So. Um, as far as I've, I've been able to tell in the years I've been researching and verifying um, different botanicals, in particular the, the Easy Act tea formulation that my clients have really loved and have gotten a, a very, uh, very powerful, you know, very, uh, very important uh, healing experiences from taking in the cheese. So their immune system recognizes the information at the molecular and atomic levels uh, from these botanicals and goes to work to correct itself. And it malfunctions at the microcell level, including the DNA level. So that's how compatible plants are to the human body. Our body's DNA knows how to read the information in plant DNA and decide whether they should splice in uh, the particular set of genes that have been damaged in our own DNA. So it's a very uh, intelligent design that's at work here that people don't even realize. So their affiliation for this particular um, study is the Biosciences Director of Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in Livermore, California. And again, their work in um, genetic uh, engineering, bioengineering is, is world famous, or shall I say infamous in certain cases. And this is their scientific reference. They set it up to look like a, a legitimate study, but there are so many holes in it that even I can figure it out. So I'd like to see it pit, pitted against uh, a peer-reviewed panel. And uh, if it has ever been, it was probably thrown out. So the findings in the above example do not consider the antioxidant immune-stimulating properties of EZAC's botanical ingredients in a live subject whose immune system plays a role in identifying and destroying cancer cells. The findings in this study do not consider that body enzymes, along with the immune system, act on cancer cells while merely applying the tea mixture to cancer cell lines in vitro is not the same environment whatsoever. In this study, one can hardly reach the conclusion that it causes cancer in breast cancer cells, especially when cells that are nourished in a petri dish will indeed proliferate, be it a cancer cell or a cell taken from a living thing that is not damaged or diseased. Those same breast cancer receptor sites tested would respond differently and more intricately with the T considering the countless actions of the body's entire biochemistry. Testing cells in isolation without the body's vastly intricate dynamics can yield a much different result. Therefore, the conclusion reached in this study remains very unsubstantiated as any legitimate review board would confirm. So this is what I put together, uh, just a very brief, you know, gathering of information uh, based on making a case for the Easy Act Tea in defense of Easy Act Tea. And uh, thank you for joining me 
If you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe. Tap the notification bell. I put uh, videos out uh, often enough so that you can be notified on the variety of videos that I put out for people. So again, this is Mary Esther Gilbert, and I bid you good health and the right information, you know. Um, and even though the scientific research, uh, some of these papers are very technical, it takes some time to to uh, understand, you know, their their language and to understand how these studies, the, these research the studies have been conducted. But over time, you will get to know them. Uh, also, uh, make sure that you study how your human body works at the microcell level. Uh, your nutritional physiology is the key, the very foundation to good health. Uh, so if you watch all of my videos on my channel, Mary Esther Gilbert, just do a search on my name and all my, my videos will come up. And so uh, there's more to come. And I'm developing courses. And so I will be making announcements to those who are are subscribed to my channel as well. So thank you very much for joining me.